I do have played for the um, r and one one with one zero into Nevis before Lumdo inbound or visual with Nevis. Vertical track. When she says vertical track, I hit Bnav and the lowest to the blues. Whiskey Papa have you inside, play to land one zero. One one is zero and zero six knots. Uh, bracket clear, it's clear to Palomar Airport via the bracket. Runway 26, obstacle departure procedure. Prado. Victor. It was 1400 feet. Editing. Okay. We're armed for the GPS. GPS. And now it's contact approach 124.6. There we go. And we're off to Prado and then we're off to the races. 124.6. Welcome back. Shy of auto throttles and auto land, perhaps the ultimate in automation is when we ask the avionics to simultaneously navigate both laterally and vertically. The flight director, and thereby the autopilot, provides a number of vertical modes. Undoubtedly, the most magical being vertical navigation, or VNAV. Imagine this. You depart Las Vegas in your turboprop and climb to cruise. Arrive overhead the Hector VOR, arm VNAV, and for 200 miles sit back and monitor as the automation manages the mandatory and PD descents for both the arrival and approach procedures. Let's look to see what's behind the magic curtain. VNAV manages to sense for magenta legs outside the final approach fix. For these VNAV legs, the flight director tracks this magenta chevron to exactly meet the step-down altitudes. And then as we approach the final approach fix, the VDI captures the diamond depicting the green glide slope or magenta glide path. To get ready for vertical navigation, we need to carefully review the step-down altitudes in the navigator. As always, we respond to the ATC trigger phrase cleared for the approach by hitting the autopilot APR button that arms the glide slope and glide path and then press VNAV and dial the final approach fix altitude to enable the VNAV legs. Our eyes immediately go to the command line to confirm we're set laterally with GPS and vertically with VNAV for the step downs and glide slope or glide path for the final approach. Just in case I haven't emphasized this enough. So, what comes with this magical, mystical VNAV? Compared to traditional dive and drive, perhaps less work and more stabilized approaches but the important need to monitor very diligently. To monitor, we need to understand a bit of the VNAV logic. For each of the VNAV legs, the flight director is constantly calculating when it should activate top of descent in order to exactly reach the step-down altitudes at the next waypoint. Factoring in our instantaneous ground speed, there might be a brief level off and then a repeat of this top of descent logic for the subsequent step downs. As we enter the leg leading to the final approach fix, the flight director looks 
to capture the glide slope or glide path for the increasingly accurate final approach course. Continuing in the spirit of vertical navigation, let's look at a couple departure procedures. First, on an interesting obstacle departure out of bracket field, we have straight ahead to 1400 feet, then a left turn to intercept a radial from the Pomona VOR. Three ways to automate this. The first two are effectively the same and based on dialing in the 164 radial as either green or magenta needles on the CDI. Option two, in my opinion, a bit simpler, calls for entering and activating the Pomona to Prado leg. Our second departure is a published SID out of my home base, Santa Barbara. In the navigator, we simply select the procedure with our cleared runway, and in this case, the only exit at Morro Bay. For the cleared 1-5 right runway, the initial leg is straight out, so we can preset the flight director in nav mode laterally and indicated airspeed vertically. It's our choice to hand fly to the flight director for the entire SID or, at the appropriate altitude, engage the autopilot. In either case, we're merrily monitoring the flight director all the way to Morro Bay. Despite not being a flight instructor or an expert in these modern avionics, I'll try to stretch your patience with a few suggestions. I suggest viewing the automation as both much more and much less than just the autopilot. Instead, I'd place the focus once again on the flight director and the data and computations in real time our new best friend handles for us. To leverage this power, I suggest grabbing a pilot friend on a VMC day and work to refine personal minimums, plus react to gotchas thrown at us. Some of this with the autopilot engaged, but also frequently hand flying to the flight director and to the raw CDI and VDI needles. Modern avionics provide us with awesome tools for improved precision and safety. If and only if, we continuously work to stay on top of our game. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the thumbs up, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications. Thanks for flying with us.